Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at the retail method. It's a method used by, guess what, retailers like Best Buy, Staples, any place where they sell to customers, large retails, big box stores. That's to value inventory without a physical count. Very similar to the concept of the gross profit margin method or the gross profit percentage method. Now, why would they do that? What's the purpose? Well, if they want to have a quick computation of their profit without taking a physical count, sometimes they want to estimate inventory shortage or guesstimate, or sometimes they need this information for insurance purposes, but they don't want to do go through the count. So it's a way to estimate. What information is needed to get this method done? Well, you will need the cost and retail value of goods purchased. Now the cost, we know what cost is, what the company paid for an item. Retail is how much they're selling it for. So when you walk into a store and you see an item for $50, that's the sales price and that's or the retail. Now this item might have cost the company, cost the company maybe $25, but the retail price is 50. So we need that information so we need to find out what is the cost and retail value of goods available for sale. And hopefully we all know what goods available for sale, which is beginning inventory plus purchases. Then we need the information about sales. How much sales did we uh, accounted for this period? And that's easy. We're just going to look up our sales. We might have additional information to discuss about the computation. So there are more more items to be aware of when we're computing the retail method inventory. Now the retail method comes in different flavors. We have the conventional, we have LIFO, we have other method. In this session I'm going to be covering the conventional method. If you understand the conventional method I'm going to explain all the different items, all the different pieces, then you'll be able to understand the other method. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to work an example. Before we look at an example, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate to, to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your accounting review course, nor your accounting course. I'm a useful addition. I can help you understand the material better in addition to your review course, in addition to your classes. I provide alternative explanation, alternative resources, lectures, multiple choice. Your risk is one month of subscription. Your potential gain is increasing your score on the CPA exam and passing. If not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university doing on the CPA exam. This is a list of my course catalog. I do have advanced accounting, cost accounting, intermediate, governmental tax, so on and so forth. My CPA supplemental material are aligned with your Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, so on and so forth. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. As I mentioned, I give you access to almost 1,500 AI CPA previously released questions with detailed solution. If you haven't connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation, like this recording, share it with other, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So let's start with a simple example, but it will illustrate the big concept and we would look at a more detailed example. So we're going to have a cost column and a retail column. A cost column is keeping track of cost information. Retail column is keeping track of the retail cost retailed numbers. For example, we have a company with a beginning inventory of $350 under cost. That same inventory at retail, they sell it at $500. They purchased $4,000 worth of inventory. They can sell it at retail for $6,000. Well, now we have goods available for sale, cost versus retail. Well, now what we can do is we can take the cost divided by retail and what we find out is approximately as approximately 66.92. So costs represent almost that's rounded to 67%. Let's assume we had sales of 2,500 and sales obviously only at retail because you don't have sales at cost. So if we sold 2,500 of our 6,500 retailed, what we're going to be left with is $4,000 ending inventory at retail. Well, if we have 4,000 ending inventory at retail and we know cost is 60% of that, well, if we take 4,000 times 66.92%, it's going to give us $2,676.92 estimating ending inventory. How did we do so? By looking at inventory at retail then multiplying it by cost to retail ratio. Now you might say, well, this is pretty straightforward. It is un until you introduce more items that you have to account for. So what we looked at is a simple example. 
let's go ahead and do the same thing including other items that could that retailers would have and we need to know how to deal with those items starting with beginning inventory for this example we have 600 cost 1000 retail pretty straightforward next we looked at purchases we have 20,000 in purchases and at cost and 34,000 at retailed which is that's that's pretty straightforward we saw this in the prior on the prior slide now we have a purchase return we have purchase return are we have the information at cost and we have the information at retail purchase return obviously they're going to reduce your purchases and and they are going to re reduce your retail because when they return something you put it back into purchases and it's going to be reducing your retail as well so notice purchases is a negative in other words we are reducing both cost and retail so this is the purchases so the next thing we're going to look at is freight freight is 500 dollars well freight is transportation do we have any information about freight do we say well we paid 500 in freight now the freight at retail is such and such no we don't sell freights right so only the freight under the cost number and this is basically what you are familiar with those are the items that you are familiar with when you compute what is our uh, purchases which is beginning inventory plus purchases plus freight and minus purchase return and we have the information here at retail but now we're going to be introducing a few more items okay starting with let's see starting with abnormal shortage what are abnormal shortage abnormal shortage is somehow we incurred losses we lost some inventory and it's not normal it was abnormal and as a result that inventory is no longer with us just we lost it so what's going to happen if we have any abnormal shortages we're going to reduce them from the cost column and from the retail column so they have a cost obviously those inventory will have a cost and they will have a retail value would we'll reduce them from both then what happens sometime the company might have a markup what what is a markup when the company sees that there's a lot of people are buying this product what they do is they increase the price then sometime what's going to happen is when after they increase the price if they see that the demand uh, the demand slow down what they do is they have a markup cancellation they mark it up so they increase the retail prices by three thousand they reduced it by a thousand the net is two thousand but that's a net positive so net markup is two thousand so what we're saying is this and why did i put all these items in red all these items that are in red they go into 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 the calculation of total cost and total retailed column Okay, that's why they are all in red. Now, once I know my total cost and my total retail from these items, which is what I purchased, including the abnormal, if I take it into account, the abnormal shortage and the net markup, then I'm ready to compute my cost to retail percentage. Cost, 17,500, divided by the retail, which is 29,000, tells us our cost to retail ratio is 60%. Simply put, we have in the store, if we look at the store right now, Simply put, we have 29,000 worth of goods at retail. Those will have a cost of 17,500. Now we have additional information. Now we have a markdown. Well, we have a, when, when there's a slowdown in selling something, the company will mark it down. Okay, this is different than markup. Markup is when they increase the price. Markdown is, let's assume we start at $10. We increase the price to 12 that's a markup then we reduce it to 11 that's a markup cancellation but if we start at 10 and we reduce it to 9 then that's a markdown then we bring it back from 9 to 950 it's a markdown cancellation okay so now we have a markdown and markdown cancellation markdown is 2500 then we cancel 2000 of it so the net is 500 markdown remember negative because it's marking down your retail you mark down your retail you don't mark down your cost and notice same thing with the markup you don't mark up your cost you mark up and mark down your retail numbers because the cost is the cost you don't change the cost then we have sales and sales return sales and sales return now these are under the cost column but doesn't mean they're under the cost column just i'm just i'm having them in there to to get you to the net figure okay so the net sales is nineteen thousand. well obviously sales is only retail number it's not doesn't have cost information then we have what's called normal spoilage or normal losses normal spoilage or normal shortage are considered like sales they, therefore they are listed here only under the retail so notice the difference between normal and abnormal under the abnormal we account for the cost and we account for the retail because it's abnormal it's it will affect the ratio it's it's going into the ratio that's why we account for both 
Employee discounts, when we give discounts to employee, we consider those as sales, just like sales. They're reducing our retail. Then we have, if we have 29,000 of, of items at retail and we sold, including markdown, this much, what's left ending at retail is 74,000. Now, this is the ending inventory at retail. We don't report ending inventory at retail. We have to convert ending inventory at retail to ending inventory at cost. How do we do so? We multiply the 7,400 by 60% and we find out our ending inventory at the conventional method or lower of, of cost or average is 4466. And this is how we estimate our inventory using the, uh, the retailed method. Now, as I told you at the beginning, there's more than one version of this, but once you understand this version, once you understand what goes in here, sometime what they do, they, they include the markdown in other methods, they, they include the markdown in the ratio. So the markdown will be included here. Again, if you want to look at different method, make sure, you know, if that's what's needed, look in your textbook, look in your CPA review course. But once you know this, I could assure you, you can work with the other. You can convert really quick. There's one or two steps different. At the end of this recording, I'm going to tell you to really understand this, you got to work multiple choice, see additional illustration. And what you should do is take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I'm going to help you do better on your CPA exam by helping you understand the material better. Keep your CPA review course. You need it. Just use me as a supplemental and you will be fine. You will add 10 to 15 points. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.